archaeologists discovered the oldest portrait of a man and a woman to whom this statue belongs. Also, in this video you will see new traces of ancient civilization and find out how the Venetian beads got to Alaska. About this and not only see in this video. Hi friend, you are on the Kurtop channel. Slave Tag a small slave sign engraved with the words 1853 was discovered in Charleston, South Carolina in 2021. The square copper tag served as a kind of permit allowing the servant to work in the city and away from their owner, who paid from $10 to $35 per tag. It is known that Charleston was the only place in the United States where a work permit was issued, making the artifact a very rare find. The tag was found on the grounds of Charleston College, suggesting that the servant lost his permit while working on the building completed in 1785. Slave tags appeared in the USA in the 18th century and were used until 1865. Usually they were stamped with the date, occupation of the slave and registration number. This was used as proof that the owner of the enslaved person had allowed him to work for someone else outside of the owner's estate. Queen Mernute in 1900, Brighton William Flanders Pitchery, while studying the ancient necropolis of Am el Kab in Abydos, Egypt, discovered a rich tomb. The archaeologist was extremely delighted and encouraged. Based on the scale of the burial, he decided that he had found the last refugee of the previously unknown pharaoh. But after a while, it was necessary to admit that the tenant of this tomb was a woman named Mernute who ruled Egypt around 2950 BC. I would very much like to tell you how beautiful she was, how she conquered other states, played nobles or built great structures, but I cannot, since practically nothing is known about Queen Mernute. But on the other hand, she claims to be the very first woman in world history to independently rule the state. In any case, her personality was extraordinary. Indeed, after the death of her husband, Pharaoh Jad, Mernute became regent with her tiny son, the future pharaoh Den, and she performed duties for about 10 years. When Petrie dug up the tomb, no one knew about the existence of the goddess Nate. Therefore, he mistook Mernute for the pharaoh, a man with a strange name. In those early days, Nate was considered the patroness of princesses and queens. It was in honor of the goddess that the name Mernute was given. It meant Nate's darling. Nothing is known about Mernute's parents, but it is possible that according to the tradition of the Egyptian royal dynasties, she was a sister or at least a cousin of her own husband. Marriages were contracted within the family, so that power did not pass to another family. Then the great-grandfather of the queen could be the first pharaoh or the first dynasty of Egypt Narmer. The tomb of Mernute is different from the pyramids we are used to. At that time, maceps were built, buildings with a flat roof reminiscent of a palace. The maceps included pantries and burial chambers for servants and officials, animals, all those who, according to the bloodthirsty custom, were sacrificed and had to accompany the mistress in the afterlife and serve there. In all the cells in the maceps, Except of Queen Mernute, there were tenants. Gold Cross with the Runes of the Kingdom of Northumbria. Near the town of Berwick, on the banks of the Tweed River, a thousand-year-old relic was discovered by amateur archaeologists. This relic was a pectoral cross made of pure gold, but the most interesting thing is that there were runic signs on its entire surface. Having deciphered only a part of the runic signs, scientists were able to identify one name that they had not previously encountered. It is known from history that more than a thousand years ago, the territory where the cross was found was part of the Kingdom of Northumbria. But this is not all, as scientists suggest that the religious center of the kingdom itself was also located here. Amateur archaeologists took the find for examination. The discovered ancient objects are not immediately re recognized as values. At first, the discovered object must be properly studied, and only after that, scientists can recognize its archaeological value. And it so happens that it takes years. It took about a year to confirm the archaeological value of the Golden Cross. The find literally put the scientists at a standstill, since they believed that it was made of an alley, but it turned out that it was made of pure gold. Scientists have dated it to the 8th-9th centuries AD. 
Scientists were also struck by the fact that almost all of its surface was strewn with signs. Scientists have so far managed to decipher only a part of them, but they all add up to one word, Idraf, a name that has not yet been found in science. Now scientists know the name of the probably owner of the cross. Now they can only guess who he was, and most likely he was from the upper class, since it is unlikely that an ordinary person was able to afford such a decoration. Scientists have put forward a version that this is an abbreviation on behalf of the real Erdwolf, which has been found more than once in historical sources. Moreover, this name was given to one of the kings of Northumbria, whose fate turned out to be very sad. He was overthrown and then expelled from the kingdom. New Traces of an Ancient Civilization Scientists have been trying for several years to solve the riddle of the ancient metropolis, which, by the way, is included in the UNESCO World Heritage List as a burnt city. The city was around 3200 BC. Scientists also know that it was populated no less than four times. That is, it was restored every time after catastrophic fires that completely destroyed the city. It, like a phoenix bird, was reborn from the ashes. Excavations this year have brought rare artifacts to archaeologists, with which they hope to gain new information about this mysterious city. Almost every archaeological mission in this city is dedicated to unraveling the mystery of the city that has died many times and, most importantly, why it was rebuilt from the ruins again and again. This year, archaeologists have found new traces of settlements that once existed on the site. But in addition to traces of ancient buildings, many artifacts were also discovered. Some of them are quite rare. Archaeologists have dug trenches along long ruined structures that they hope will help them uncover the region's early settlement. From previous excavations, scientists have already learned that the inhabitants of this city were good both in weaving and craft. They created amazing decorative objects, they were also very good at carving in stone. Gantia, an amazing ancient temple at the top of the Shara Plateau, on the island of Gozo, which belongs to Malta, is the ancient temple complex of Gantia. Literally, this name translates as the Tower of the Giants. This complex consists of two temples, south and north. They are next to each other and are surrounded by a wall of limestone blocks. Some of the blocks are 5.5 meters high and weigh 50 tons. Now comes the fun part. The age of this complex is about 5,500 years old, and it was built when there were no iron tools and the wheel was not even invented. Gantia is a magnificent temple complex of the Neolithic era. The walls of both temples are built of limestone blocks, and without the use of a fastening solution, the stones simply hold on due to their weight. Locals believe that these temples were built by an ancient race of giants to worship their gods. Both temples in their projection are similar to rounded maple leaf. How did the Maltes build such structures? How were the heavy blocks moved? The researchers believe that this could have been done with rounded stones, like in bell bearings. Such stones have been found in the vicinity of the temple. But delivering limestone to the construction site is only half the battle. It was still necessary to lift the blocks up. Have they been lifted by hand? Most likely not. Levers were used. A massive block with a recess is installed near the southern temple, which, according to scientists, served for ablution in front of the entrance to the temple. In its five asps, there were different altars, and judging by the abundance of animal bones contained in the cultural layer, sacrifices were made to the gods there. Archaeologists believe that the Gantia complex was dedicated to the cult of fertility. Many figurines related to this cult were found found in the temples themselves and in the surrounding area. Much to our regret, in 1827, Colonel John Otto Bayer, deputy governor of the island of Gozo, gave an order to clean up the territory of the monument from rubbish. Along with everything that was considered rubbish, land was taken out, which probably contained interesting and valuable archaeological finds that would have opened the veil of secrecy over this impressive structure. Surprise from the Well it is one of the rarest and most unique gemstones in the world. 
Sri Lanka is one of the leading suppliers of gemstones to the world market. In 2020 alone, the island nation earned half a billion dollars from the export of valuable minerals. Here, for example, are the world's oldest sapphire mines, which replenished the treasury of King Solomon. And 2021 was marked for Sri Lanka by several loud and especially valuable finds at once, one of which was found in a well in the Ratnapura region. It was in the summer of 2020. Workers were digging a well in the courtyard of a local jeweler when they stumble upon a huge stone. The jeweler, glancing at the find with an experienced eye, immediately ordered to pull it out of the well in order to examine it more closely. One moment, the weight of the pebble was 510 kilograms. After careful examination, it turned out that the find was a huge sapphire nugget, which the jeweler immediately reported to the authorities. It took almost a year to clear the stone from dirt and impurities and send it for examination. And only after that, in July 2021, the find was revealed to the world and all the leading media spoke about it. The total weight of the stone is 2.5 million carats. Of course, such a giant could not remain nameless and therefore it was named Serendipity. Gamini Zoisa, an employee of the National Gem and Jewelry Administration of Sri Lanka, noted that the approximate age of the sapphire is 400 million years, and according to preliminary estimates, the value of the nugget is about $100 million. And in September 2021, a sapphire nugget weighing 310 kilograms was found at one of the mines also near Ratnapura. The find was presented to the public in early December, and at the moment, its cost is not announced. It will be known after certification, but the Naga has already received the name Queen of Asia. Decipher the inscription of the 14th century an inscription from the 14th century was discovered on the island of Cherson, which is one and a half kilometers from the Turkish province of Cherson on the southeastern coast of the Black Sea. Throughout its history, this island has been known under different names and has preserved traces of life since ancient times. Largely due to this, it became the subject of many legends and mythological stories. For example, it is known as the island where Amazonian women once lived, as well as a mythological story of how Hercules came here to find golden fur. Successive excavations have been conducted here since 2009, and during this time, archaeologists have made many important discoveries. Thus, among the finds one can note a variety of ceramics, frescoes, coins, as well as skeletonized remains. In addition, ruins of walls, temples, wells, and tombs have been discovered here. The inscription, which is now in question, was discovered on the island last year, and according to scientists, is very important, since it provides new data on the history of both the island itself and the entire region. There was an inscription on the floor of the tower structure and belongs to the period of the reign of Alexius III Megas Komnenos, the emperor of the Trebizond. It was made with goose feathers on a terracotta slab measuring 30 by 50 centimeters. It says that the buildings and walls on the island were ordered by the Venerable Maria, wife of Pinkernes Kyriakos, son of the governor Gerson Rustem. This name gives scholars reason to talk about the presence of strategic marriages between the Turkmenbaks in the region and the Komnenian dynasty, an ancient Byzantine aristocratic family that went down in history as the Great Komnenes. Also, scientists know that the importance of the inscription is also in the fact that it itself is a unique work written in the regional alphabet of the Trebizond Empire. The oldest portrait of a man in front of you is the most ancient, apparently, preserved portrait of a man on Earth. A woman with a distorted face lived in the south of what is now Bohemia, among rhinos, sculptures and ritual bonfires. And imagine she was a shaman. Yes, this is the oldest evidence that prior to the beginning of history there was no gender discrimination among the clergy. Apparently, the choice of profession was influenced by the unusual appearance of Our Lady. A negotiator with spirits should be unusual. See? The left side of her face is different from the right, and there is something wrong with the eye. Apparently, the consequences of birth trauma. 
a sculpture a portrait of a shaman lady, approximately 25-27 thousand years old, was unearthed in a Paleolithic settlement at the foot of a rocky hill in what is now South Moravia. The village in the neighborhood is called Dolni Vistaniche as a site itself. The climate is blessed here, but now, and at the time of the mysterious shamaness in Moravia, it was cold and there were reindeer, as well as cave lions, woolly rhinos and mammoth, of course. Behind a solid fence made of mammoth tusks stood round huts, something like the chums of our Nenets and Conti. Each chum contains from one to five neat hearth. Archaeologists have found in the ash the remains of hundreds of ceramic figurines, the very rhino lions, as well as the Paleolithic Venuses. Yes, friends, this is also the place where the oldest ceramics in the world were found. What kind of ceramics? Look at this Venus, a masterpiece even by today's standards. The inhabitants of the camp either moved a lot from across the continent or traded with distant countries. Here they found shells from the Mediterranean Sea, the nearest coast of which is more than 500 kilometers. It used to be thought that the first weavers among people appeared 5-8 thousand years ago. But no, prints of fine woolen fabrics were recently found on ceramics from Dolne Vistaniche. So the shaman lady wore dresses, not just mammoth skins. Mammoth were also the main source of protein in her diet, but about 25% of the protein came from freshwater fish caught in nets. How do we all know this about her profession in food? So they found her, this lady, under the floor of one of the huts years after the opening of the portrait. A woman of about 36-45 years old was buried with a fox in her hands. Two scapular bones of a mammoth was incomprehensible signs were placed on top, and everything was covered with sacred red ochre. By the way, this is approximately how the people of the far north buried their shamans already in historical times. And yes, her skull is deformed on the left, just like in the famous portrait. Venetian Beats in Alaska Archaeologists at the University of Alaska at Fairbanks have discovered several tiny blue beads in three different locations in Alaska that were made in Venice during the Renaissance. Scientists say the discovery could rewrite the history of America's discovery. Scientists believe that Columbus was not the first European to set foot in America. Most likely, these were the Vikings who saw America almost 500 years before him. However, no experts have every reason to believe that after the Vikings, other Europeans could have visited these lands. Michael Koontz and Robin Mills, the authors of the new study, found glass beads in three different locations around Brook Falls in Alaska. Previously, Inuit lived in these places. Archaeologists have already found beads and jewelry in this region, but this time the discovery turned out to be unique because together with the beads, scientists discovered several bracelets, rings and most importantly, a robe made of plant fiber. It was the rope who helped the researchers to carry out carbon dating and find out the time of creation of artifacts. Analysis showed that the items date from 1397 to 1488. Columbus arrived in America in 1492. This time range was also confirmed by the analysis of coal that was found near the finds. The researchers know that these beads are most likely the earliest known European goods in America. Perhaps the indigenous people of America were in contact with people who either visited Italy themselves or traded items from this country, buying them from the others. Since Venice was the European center for glass production in the 1400s, many traders sent items from the area along the Silk Road that connected Europe and Asia. Probably this way the beads could get to the far east of Russia and from there to Alaska. Artifacts of the Young People The British explorers Theodore and Stray organized an expedition to abandoned Mayan cities in the early 20th century. The guide who led them through the jungle suddenly fell ill and went to another world. Travelers left without a guide had to find their own way. Every day they went around the neighborhood in search of a further way to advance, and one day stumbled upon the walls of an ancient temple. The researchers set up a camp under the walls of the temple, deciding to explore it thoroughly. Taking torches, they went inside the temple, finding a spacious hall decorated with bas-reliefs, seeing which Stray immediately 
noted for himself their great resemblance to Egyptian ones, and he spent a lot of time on expeditions in Africa. Further, they discovered two huge pedestals on which some bizarre geometric elements were located. At first, they were mistaken for statues, but later, they realized that these were some mechanisms. They were made of some unknown metal, while everything else around was made of stone. Next to them lay, as if in a hurry, tools, which upon closer examination turned out to be parts of mechanisms. Researchers have devoted a lot of time to understanding how these unusual objects work, but have not been able to. They only assumed that it was something resembling an engine. But an even more interesting discovery evaded them further. They found a passage littered with a huge stone. Having spent a lot of strings to move it away, they stumble upon an obstacle from several of the same stones. Having broken their way with pickaxes, the travelers found themselves in a corridor with very unusual acoustics. It led them to the burial chamber, and then a real miracle evaded them. In the burial sarcophaguses, they found the remains of unusual creatures. The main creature was in the center, its remains wrapped in silk sheets. The head was larger than a human's, with huge eye sockets and a small mouth such that it could hardly speak. Smaller, similar creatures were nearby. Also along the perimeter were tiny sarcophaguses with the remains of embryos or babies already more human-like in appearance. Upon his return to Boston, Stray as he sent the collected artifacts to his acquaintance, Merling, whom he considered a specialist in humanoids. Artifacts remained with Merling in the collection. Now they can be seen in his museum in England. Roman city in the Sahara For almost a thousand years, the sands of the Sahara Desert have hidden the ancient Roman city of Timgad under them. Even the famous Pompeii can envy its safety. To this day, Timgad is considered the best preserved city designed for perpendicular development in accordance with the Roman traditions of urban planning. Timgad was found in 1765 by a research team led by the Scotsman James Bruce, who was looking for the source of the Nile and came across a perfectly preserved Roman city. Then the traveler could not assess the scale of his find. In his diary, he described it as small but full of elegant buildings. During a short excavation, several statues of the Emperor Antonius Pius were found, which left no doubt that this was a Roman city. Unfortunately, in London, the description of his trip to Africa was met rather coolly, and he, offended by such a nut attitude towards himself, did not publish anything. And only in 1790, at the insistence of his friend Danes Barrington, the book Travels to the Sources of the Nile in 1768, 1768, to 9, 1770, 1771, 1772, and 1773 was published. However, it was severely criticized by other famous travelers as untrustworthy, and the Senfeld city was forgotten for almost another hundred years. Bruce's research was continued by Lambert Playfair, a British diplomat who read Bruce's work and decided to go in search of the ancient city. Large-scale excavations of the city began in 1881 and continued for about 80 years. A large public library, 14 public baths, a theater with 3,500 seats, an epiphany basilica with a font, a 12-meter triumphal arch and more than 200 mosaics were found. There was a water pipe in the city, which is still in operation. There were public toilets built over special channels through which water always flowed. In general, no worse than in any imperial city. In general, Timgat was built in the Roman style down to the smallest detail. It was the real fragment of the great empire that lasted until about 700 AD. Being on the eve of the Atlas Mountains, it had to ensure the safety of the coastal regions from the Berber nomads. Actually, the constant raids of the barbarians devastated the city, and the strongest sandstorm hid it under the sands for almost a thousand years, thereby preserving it from destruction. Scientists have obtained the DNA of ancient people with the help of lice. Macromoleculis are well preserved in the sticky mass that makes up the lane of acts of parasites living in the human hairline. 
Scientists from the University of Reading, UK, have deciphered the genomes of a 2,000-year-old mummies that were found in the vicinity of the Argentine city of San Juan. Scraps of DNA from mummified people were preserved in the clutches of lice eggs that lived in their hair. The resulting genetic material is well preserved. Thanks to DNA analysis, it was possible to find out how the Indians moved around the continent. In particular, scientists have found that the people from the Ancelta culture, whose mummies were studied by scientists, are really to the first groups of Indians who came to South America at the end of the Ice Age. It turned out that the ancestors and closest relatives of these Indians did not live in the Andes, but in the jungle in the north of the Amazon. At the same time, DNA fragments of the Oncovirus MCV were found in the glue of the lice, which in the past apparently spread among ancient people through skin parasites. Previously, scientists have not even tried to look for DNA residues in human hair or animal fur, since they are almost entirely composed of the keratin protein. Usually genetic material can be extracted from bones. As for the aforementioned mummies, they were so fragile that the researchers were not allowed to touch their skeletons, which forced them to go in an unusual way and carefully examine the hair. Roman Gravestone with Rare Epitaph a tombstone of the Roman period, on which an inscription rare for that time in verse, was discovered during archaeological excavations in the southern suburbs of Toric Chersonesus, at present the territory of Sevastopol, Crimea. Archaeologists are conducting excavations near the territory of the Toric Chersonese Museum Reserve, on the site of former military units. In the Hellenistic, ancient periods and the Middle Ages, there was a suburb of Chersonese here. In particular, for several centuries there was a cemetery here. The monument itself is interesting, a good example of early Roman funerary sculpture. But it's impossible to say that this has never happened. Similar tombstones have been found in the Chersonese region before. The inscription is another matter. It is interesting because it is poetic. On the tombstone, which is made of Proconesian marble and has survived almost intact, the image of a boy is carved. Below it is an inscription. According to scientists, the work was most likely made by a local sculptor at the end of the 1st 2nd centuries AD. To date, the inscription has been translated, but the research does not end there. The inscription reads, Here lies Mitrodorus, son of Apollonites, farewell. I, a Sally tombstone, was erected by an educator, father, and a nurse, mother. The dialect of the inscription is clearly Ionic and not Doric, a dialect of the ancient Greek language which was spoken not only by the Greeks but also by educated inhabitants of other provinces of the Roman Empire. This also applies to the names of the son and father. Perhaps this family moved Chersonese from one of Milesian colonies, Miletus, a large Greek city on the territory of modern Turkey, whose inhabitants found several colonies in the Black Sea region. Mysterious Adams Bridge Indian archaeologists intend to study in detail the string of shoals between Sri Lanka and India, which Muslims call Adams Bridge and Hindus Ramas Bridge, and answer the question of its origin. According to the Ramayana epic, the ruler Rama ordered the construction of a bridge in order to go to Sri Lanka to fight the demon Ravana, who had kidnapped Sita, the king's beloved. Hindus consider the object sacred. The isthmus also appears in Islamic legends. It was through it that Adam, expelled from paradise, crossed from the island to the mainland and went to Eve. In turn, the underwater archaeologist Alec Tripathi believes that the Rama Bridge is still a man-made object. The isthmus, in his opinion, could be built by representatives of the ancient civilization, which about 4,000 years ago, under the onslaught of the Aryan tribes, was forced to flee from the Hindustan Peninsula to Sri Lanka. Alec Tripathi will lead an underwater expedition of archaeologists that the Indian Council of Historical Research will send this summer to understand the origin of the isthmus. Previous the work was postponed several times, so in 2005 the project was cancelled due to mass protests of believers and in 2013 due to the threat of a tsunami. Now the Indian authorities went to deepen the Rama Bridge to facilitate navigation, but Hindus, who wake up the majority of the country's population, are protesting against this. Maya frescoes in a private house
In Guatemala, during the repair of one of the old private residential buildings, under several layers of plaster, unique colored frescoes of the Exil people were discovered, which is still one of the largest groups of the Maya civilization. Polish archaeologists examined several buildings in the ancient city of Chahol in western Guatemala. The result was an unprecedented array of wall paintings that date back to the colonial period. According to scientists, the frescoes were made from 1520 to 1821 AD. The first of them was accidentally discovered in 2003 by a local resident who started renovating his house. True, until 2008, due to the unstable political situation in the country, scientists could not get access to these finds. For the same reasons, researchers were not allowed into Chakal at all for more than 40 years, only now managed to document the frescoes. Their iconography is unique because it combines elements of the pre-Columbian era with motives brought by Europeans. For the first time, such images were found not in a religious building, but in a residential building. Scientists have carried out iconographic, chemical and radiocarbon analysis of the paintings. Most of them date back to the 17th-18th centuries. Perhaps their appearance was associated with the revival of indigenous religious traditions against the background of the weakening of the Spanish colonial oppression. The frescoes are painted with bright colors and are quite well preserved. The scenes depicted on them are interconnected by a plot. The main characters are musicians and dancers. Scientists pay attention to the fusion of Indian and Spanish traditions, which is reflected in the iconography. Thus, the frescoes depict people entirely dressed in European costumes, but they also meet people whose clothes are mixed Indian-Spanish outfits. The same can be said about tools. The largest cities of the Ischel people, Chahol, Nibe and Kotzel, were captured by the Spaniards in the 16th century, but have survived to this day. The local population has largely preserved its traditions and cultural identity. According to scientists, the total number of Mayan descendants today is approximately 8 million people. About 6.2 million of them live in Guatemala. A knife instead of a hand Four years ago, the Langobard necropolis was discovered in northern Italy, apparently dating back to this to 68 AD. The remains of hundreds of people and several animals were found in it. The skeleton of a 40-50 year old man with the right arm amputated to the middle of the forearm attracted particular attention of archaeologists. According to one version, he could have lost a limb as a result of a domestic injury. However, according to another version, given the fact that the Lombard Kingdom participated in numerous wars, a man could lose his arm in one of the battles. However, archaeologists were interested in a fragment of the skeleton of his hand with traces of biomechanical impact. On the bones of the hand, deformations carried prolonged bearing of the prosthesis were clearly visible. And this was confirmed by the teeth of a man. Significant wear of the teeth on the right side of the jaw indicated that he often had to use them to fix the prosthesis with straps. The position of the man's skeleton in the burial was noticeably different from the remains of his associates. If the knives and other weapons of the buried lay on the right and left next to them and the arms were extended along the body, then the disabled person had the right arm bent and lying across the body, while the knife was in place of the amputated wrist. In the same place, archaeologists found a D-shaped buckle and apparently a decade leather fragment. According to scientists, it could be a part of a special cap covering the amputated limb. Obviously, after the amputation, the bone healed quickly, an extremely rare event when there were no antibiotics. Moreover, a man deprived of a part of a limb lived for a long time after the operation, using Moreover, a prosthesis, albeit a primitive one. Weapons and clothing 48,000 years old. An international research team from the German Max Planck Institute for Human History, Griffith University in Australia and the Department of Archaeology of the Sri Lankan government has presented evidence for the earliest use of bows and arrows outside of Africa. The study is published in the journal Science Advances. Scientists have studied artifacts aged 45-48 thousand years found in the Fahian Lina cave. It is located in the tropical forests of Sri Lanka. Among the discovered tools, the analyzed Analysis revealed bone arrowheads. Until now, the age of the oldest arrows found in 
Southeast Asia was about 32,000 years. In addition, these weapons are much older than those found in Europe. Only in Africa were more ancient arrows found. Traces preserved on the arrowheads indicate that they were used for hunting. Bone tools with single and double hooks were also found in the cave. Detailed microscopic analysis helped prove that these tools were used for weaving fishing nets and probably for tailoring. This was indicated by microscopic fibers that could be examined on hooks using a modern electron microscope. Clear evidence has also been found for the production of colored pearls by prehistoric people, Langley said. The beads were dyed with ochre. Some artifacts indicate that people at that time already knew the technology for the production of artificial pearls, which were mined with the help of river mollusks. The age of jewelry is about 45,000 years. Their well-established production may indicate that pearls were made for sale, perhaps they were exchanged for other goods. This means that a complex social network could have existed in the tropics of present-day Sri Lanka as early as 45,000 years ago. Rare Grave of a Warrior from the Time of Christ in the UK, archaeologists have unearthed a tomb dating from the late Iron Age to the early Roman era, 1st century BC, 50 AD, in which a warrior with weapons was probably buried. A rare burial was discovered in Wolberton, Sussex. It was found by a chance during the survey of the site allotted for the construction of a housing complex. Archaeologists did not find human remains in the grave. They probably just decomposed over time. The coffin, which apparently was wooden, has not been preserved either. However, the burial is interesting for the artifacts that were in it. So, four vessels made of local clay were found in the grave. These were widely used vessels for storing food at that time. Between two of them, scientists found a spearhead. Apparently, some metal objects were laid at the feet of the deceased, the shape and purpose of which is still a mystery to researchers. An iron sword was laid along the body. It was in sheath made of some sort of organic material. The scabbard was decorated with a copper alloy mount with a very complex ornament. According to archaeologists, the burial belonged to a warrior. For Sussex, this is an extremely rare find. In addition, the objects found in the grave indicate that the warrior was not an ordinary person, but a very important person in his society. Determining the sex of a person by teeth more recently, scientists from the University of California, Davis, have developed a technique that can be used to determine the sex of the remains of the skeleton of ancient people from the proteins in the composition of the teeth. It is assumed that the technique will allow archaeologists to compile new data on the life of ancient people. Usually, the sex of ancient people is determined by the pelvic bones, but this does not always work. Children and adolescents do not yet have structural changes in the bones, so in such in such cases, it can be quite difficult to determine the sex. Teeth come to the rescue, but existing technologies for determining sex by teeth also far from ideal. With the help of sensitive mass spectrometry, with the preservation of teeth, it is possible to isolate the protein amelogenin involved in the formation of animal. In women, the amelogenin protein genes are located on the X chromosome, while in men, the protein genes are present on both the X and Y chromosomes. During the study, about 40 samples of tooth animal were studied, belonging to 25 different people living in the modern period and 107,300 BC. Peptides, specific for the female form of amelogenin, were found in all samples, for the male form in 26. The researchers also note that their method minimizes the effect on animal, which is important for the preservation of the remains. It is cheaper and does not require sterile conditions. It is believed that the new technique will be used in conjunction with other popular methods for analyzing archaeological remains, such as DNA analysis, morphological analysis, or analysis using stable isotopes. Ancient Shark 91 million years old Meet Cretidus hortonorum. This is a 91 million year old fossilized shark that was accidentally discovered in Kansas and took paleontologists by surprise. 
Thanks to a new and unexpected discovery, scientists have been able to identify an entirely new species of prehistoric shark that once inhabited present-day Kansas. The 91 million year old shark lived at a time when dinosaurs roamed the Earth. The creature is believed to have grown to about 5 meters 17 feet in length. Although experts only have a partial skeleton of the creature, they say the shark was most like white large, though not much larger than modern white sharks. However, experts have shown that their models suggest the creature could have grown up to 7 meters in length. During the excavations, 134 shark teeth, 61 vertebrae, as well as 23 scales and numerous fragments of calcified cartilage of the creatures were found. The shark fossils belong to a genus of sharks called lemniforms, which includes great white sharks, sand tiger sharks, but also many other well-known species. Swiss watch in a 400-year-old tomb the watch case back is engraved with Swiss. The arrow stopped long ago, and it is not known how many years they showed 1006. An amazing artifact was discovered during the filming of a movie dedicated to the excavation and opening of tombs by Chinese researchers of antiquities. At the time the object was found, scientists and two journalists from the city of Shanghai were at the excavation site. They clearly realized that the tomb was being opened for the first time in 400 years since the reign of the Ming dynasty. From an interview with Huan Yang, an archaeologist involved in the excavation. When we were clearing the ground near the coffin, a thin metallic sound was heard. The first thing we thought was that a small pebble had fallen the broke of a rock. We found a solid object and at first thought it was a ring, but when it was cleared of the earth and examined, it turned out that it was a watch. So the excavation of a tomb with an obvious content turned into a quest with many questions. Around the same time, land exploration took place near the Fushal Amsi community, where a certain century mobile phone was discovered. It was not clear how, when, and why people placed this antique treasure in an ancient burial. To understand this, experts from Beijing were invited to the excavation site. Ufologists and seekers of the inexplicable did not wait for their research. The versions of what happened in the tomb were called the visit of a UFO as well as the creation of a time machine with the help of which it was possible to go back. To carry out this mission, it was simply necessary to go back 3-4 centuries in the past because the Swiss watch began to be produced in 1880. The Swiss watch trademark and then Swiss mate began to be used 140 years ago. To apply it to products, manufacturers must comply with several conditions. The mechanism must be produced in Switzerland, it must be built into the accessory, all tests and checks must be carried out on the territory of the country, the watch must consist of 50 or more percent of Swiss parts. The watch can be considered Swiss only if these instructions are followed. But how such an invention got into the tomb, why the watch was so small that it was confused with the ring, is still unknown. Giant War Memorial in Syria, archaeologists have identified the huge mound as a 4,000-year-old memorial to honor warriors who fell in battle. Outwardly, it resembles the ancient Egyptian step pyramid at Saqqara. This hill is known as the White Monument. It is so-called because of the white, sunshine in building materials used in its construction. The hill itself was first excavated by archaeologists several decades ago, but only now it was possible to thoroughly examine it. This structure was built around 2400 BC. Moreover, the mound already existed here. Ancient people modified it by carving rolls of horizontally arranged steps. As it turned out only now, each of these steps contains at least 30 graves sealed with layers of plaster. Scientists know that old burials were arranged in accordance with the funerary practices of those times. The dead were carefully laid in the graves along with military equipment. In the burials, weapons were found, as well as the skins of, of horses of local breeds. Professor Anne Porter from the University of Toronto noted that there is a clear pattern in the structure of burials. Thus, on one side of the memorial, warriors covered with horse skins and buried in paired graves, while on the other side, soldiers with weapons but without horse skins were buried. According to scientists, this may indicate a kind of hierarchy. Apparently, on the one hand, only those soldiers who fought in chariots were buried, and on the other, infantrymen. The researchers also found the giant memorial was not actually a huge mass grave of warriors who died in one battle, as one might assume, but analyzers showed that the deceased were reburied here for some time after their death. New statue of Emperor Octavian Augustus 
The small town of Isernia in the Italian region of Moles is not well known to tourists, although its history is at least 2,500 years old. The Semnite city of Isernia was once located here. Then, like everything Italian, it went to Romans. In the Middle Ages, the city also did not excel, but it survived both the Saracens and Frederick the Great who destroyed it quite badly, and several earthquakes did not benefit Isernia. And in 1944, he, like Pompey and Tivoli, was subjected to aerial bombardment by the Allies. One of the sites of the city has always been the medieval fortress walls, but they did not receive proper treatment and began began to collapse. The recent destruction prompted the city authorities to speed up the solution to the problem. Archaeologists began to rescue excavations in places where they are supposed to place supports according to the project. These works led to a remarkable result. A marble head of a large statue was found. According to experts, they immediately recognized the Emperor Augustus by the characteristic features of the face known for many sculptural images. The height of the find is 35 centimeters. The head belongs to a larger sculpture, a bust or rather a full-length statue. In this case, its height should be a little over 2 meters. Such statues of emperors were usually intended for installation in city forums or in temples dedicated to the imperial cult. True, neither the forum nor the temple in Isernia have yet been opened. Archaeologists estimate that the hat was made between 20 BC and 10 AD, possibly during the lifetime of Augustus, who died in 14 AD. For the walk, Carrara marble from Lunigiana was chosen, one of the most expensive varieties of this stone. Relics of the lost world washed up on the beach. In the Netherlands, a nurse named Wille van Windergen found hundreds of artifacts tens of thousands of years old on the beach near her home, which proved the existence of Doggerland in ancient times, a vast land inhabited by people which is now at the bottom of the North Sea. When Windergen made her first discovery in 2013, then, walking along the beach, she accidentally discovered a mammoth tooth washed ashore by the sea. Since then, the search for antiquities has become her passion. Now the nurse's collection has more than 500 items. A few months ago, she decided to get the opinion of experts on her findings, contacted them and showed them the collection. The experts were amazed. Among the finds were relics that are extremely important for science. For example, the collection included bonefish hooks and human remains several thousand years old. Archaeologists have discovered other prehistoric objects, the oldest of which are 800,000 years old. This suggests that the Doggerlands went through several stages of settlement. The most ancient tools probably belong to representatives of the Homo antecessor species, a dead and human evolutionary branch. By the way, similar artifacts are often found on the coast of Great Britain. According to scientists, all these relics are traces of the lost world, which was once inhabited and abounded in a large number of plants and animals. During the last ice age, sea levels were 70 meters lower than they are now. Unfortunately, archaeologists did not have the opportunity to excavate on the seabed. The waters here are restless. According to experts, Doggerland could occupy about 180,000 square kilometers of land, and its area was four times the size of the modern Netherlands. Discovered the grave of Asterix or Obelix. A fantastic find, the burial of a noble Gallic warrior in full dress, with a ritually bent sword, with a ritually broken spear, with a shield and a preserved shield decoration. With a magnificent helmet, an open work crest, crest attachment, knee pads, buckles, clasps, as well as amphoras with wine and grain, the mysterious warrior lay in the most elaborate war grave ever found in England. The find is dated to around 50 BC, the late Iron Age, an exciting period of change when this part of southern Britain was under growing economic and cultural influence from the Romans and was on the verge of a full blown Roman invasion. The warrior is about 5 feet. 8 8 inches tall, about 40 years old, with very strong legs of a rider and an unusually developed right hand used to a heavy sword. The weight of the finds is not yet publicly available, but I think that it will be soon described in detail. Experts believe that the size of the tail on the helmet should be impressive. Skeletal analysis shows no signs of mortal wounds or trauma. In more detail, the cause of death can be shown by chemical analysis and ultrasound screening. An analysis of the warrior's teeth 
teeth showed that he probably came from the region of northeastern Gaul. This may well correspond to what history says about that period. The Roman invasion of Gaul, after fierce battles with the legions of Caesar, the flight of the defeated Gauls to Britain. Archaeologists do not consider the grave to be the tomb of Calm. Maybe in one of them they will find the same magic potion. Scientists who found the mysterious warrior from Burstead have already dubbed him Obelix for his mighty bones and apparently very great strength. Perhaps the mysterious warrior was a significant figure in the resistance, bringing with him a history of his own war and defeat, as well as strategic military knowledge on how to deal with the Roman army. During this period of the late Iron Age, the time of the beginning of civilization, even the beginning of urbanization, Gallic coins are found. They are found in many excavations around Chichester and Sl Silchester. And so I want to ask the question, what would have happened if the Romans had not defeated the Gauls? Perhaps the defeat is due to the sudden death of the warrior who was found in this grave. Figurine of Lovenmensch, Lion Men the Löwenmensch figurine is the oldest known piece of a figure art in the world. This is an ivory sculpture of a man lion, which is between 35 and 40,000 years old. The sculpture was first discovered in 1939 by geologist Otto Felsing in the Hollenstein Stadel Cave. By the outbreak of World War II, caused exploration of the grave of the cave to be put on hold. The fragments of the sculpture were forgotten for over 30 years at the Alm Museum until archaeologist Jahem Hen began to put them together. More details of the figure were discovered in 1962, and these were added to Kant's reconstruction in 1982. In 2009, further excavations were carried out, and smaller fragments were discovered. Today, the statue has been almost completely restored and is on display at the Alm Museum. The video has come to an end, and by tradition, I want to ask you to put a fat thumb up under the video, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell. And soon you will see a new video on the channel. Thanks for your views! Bye, everyone! Unusual skeleton under the ancient church Archaeologists working at St. Mary's Church in Stoke Mandeville could not have imagined the treasure trove of artifacts that would greet them when they first set to work on the site. Archaeological excavations first began here four years ago, in preparation for the construction of the HS2 high-speed railway. The process involved moving the remains of about 3,000 people buried in the local cemetery. Archaeologists led by Dr. Rachel Wood announced the discovery of the remains at the site of the church. They found a square foundation trench surrounded by a circular ditch that contained burials, three remarkable life-size Roman busts, and a number of other artifacts. Among the finds analyzed were a bizarre skeleton, busts, cremation urns, and a very well-preserved glass jar. The skeleton was found headless in a circular ditch. Professor Alice Roberts, host of Dig for Britain, says the extraordinary skeleton had leg injuries that suggest a sudden violent end. She claims that the find exceeds the wildest expectations of archaeologists. The body was found next to several funerary urns thrown into a ditch and broken into pieces. Guy Hunt, another archaeologist who worked at the site, says, there are eight of them. We also have burials. This burial is really interesting because this is not the same person who was buried in the classical way. It's someone who's more or less thrown into the ditch. They were buried along with the coins, and the coins are really very important here. The coins can be dated, giving archaeologists a much better idea of what era various items were left in the moat. Ancient Egyptian Pyramid in Kazakhstan this structure, similar to the pyramids of ancient Egypt, was discovered by archaeologists in the Kazakh steppe. The mausoleum was built over 3,000 years ago. The discovery was made by members of the expedition of the Seryarka Archaeological Institute, led by candidate of historical sciences Igor Gakushkin. In the Late Bronze Age, 15th 10th century BC, people lived on the territory of Kazakhstan, leaving behind the Begazidendi Bay culture. It is characterized by high, round, rectangular mausoleums of the nobility built of rock stones. The burial tradition prescribed to lay the deceased on its side, with arms and legs bent, and weapons, jewelry, and ceramics were buried nearby. 
One of the flourishing places of the Begazid Dendi Bay of culture was the area near the village of Seriarka, not far from Karaganda. Archaeological research has been carried out here since the middle of the last century. Recently, scientific work has brought a new sensation. Archaeologists have unearthed a unique stabbed mausoleum. With its forms, this majestic funerary structure resembles the famous Egyptian pyramids of about the same historical period, and especially the Step Pyramid of Pharaoh Djoser. Here it is in the photo. By the way, archaeologists reconstructed the appearance of the pyramid in Kazakhstan. Here's what it looked like before the renovation. And here is a view after. Scientists believe that the mausoleum was erected in Seriarka more than 3,000 years ago for the local pharaoh, the leader or kagan of a powerful local tribe of the Late Bronze Age. Bronze Military Diploma during excavations in the ancient city of Peret, located in southeastern Turkish province of Adiyaman, archaeologists discovered a bronze military diploma made 1,898 years ago. Such a document was issued to a soldier after 20 years of service in the army. It meant that its owner becomes a full Roman citizen and can marry. Excavations in this area began in 2001. The task of archaeologists was to find the ancient city of Pur, one of the five largest cities in the local region. Every year in this area, scientists made various discoveries. In the current season, they managed to find a Roman fountain that remains of city water, conduits and various buildings, and a military diploma on a bronze plate. Director of the Adiyaman Museum Mehmet Alkan said that the text on the diploma, stating that the soldier after two decades of service received the status of a citizen and can marry was only translated with the help of an expert in ancient history and languages, Professor Mustafa Hamdi Sayer. He also noted that in total about 100,000 such diplomas were made. Archaeologists managed to find 800 of them. Rare Treasures in Poland during archaeological excavations on an isle near Ostrovite, Pomerania, a thousand-year-old burial richly decorated with grave goods was discovered. These items, some extremely rare, are believed to have belonged to a wealthy member of the Pomeranian elite. Two amber rings, a bronze bowl, an iron knife in a leather sheath, and bronze buckles were found in the grave of a Pomeranian nobility who lived between the 11th and 12th centuries. The head of the excavation, Dr. Jersey Sikora from the University of Lodz, noted that these two almost identical rings were symmetrically located in relation to the axis of the body. The first ring was found where the bones of the right hand should have been. The second ring was on the finger of the left hand on the other side of the body. Amber rings are extremely rare grave goods, and finding two in one grave is a unique phenomenon. The discovered burial is called elite because it differs from the nearby ones in its size and expensive items with which it was furnished. Measuring 3 meters long and 1.5 and meters wide, this grave is larger than the average bronze graves in the area, which also suggests that it is an elite grave. Although the material from which it was built has not been preserved, the shape and size indicate that it was a wooden chamber grave built like a large chest. Chamber graves are found in ancient cultures around the world, and when used for individual burial, the deceased is considered to have a higher status than an ordinary grave. Archaeologists believe that this man was a Christian because he was buried and not burned. The east-west orientation of the body also indicates a Christian burial. A city that existed 200,000 years ago in South Africa, about 150 kilometers west of the port Maputa, Mozambique, a giant stone city has been discovered. The age was determined by measuring the erosion rate of the dolerite. The metropolis of 1,500 square kilometers was built between 160,000 and 200,000 years ago. The ruins are made up of huge stone circles, most of which are buried in the sand and are only visible from the air or satellite imagery. This ancient city is considered to be part of a 10,000 square kilometer system of cities and towns. The developed network of roads connecting it with terraced agriculture suggests that this metropolis was home to a very advanced civilization. The geology of this place is also quite interesting due to the numerous gold mines located in the area. According to researchers, this ancient civilization could be engaged in gold mining. Although the locals knew about these stone remains, no one had previously questioned their origin.
origin and the age of these stone circles, although they were always in plain sight. As often happens, in 2007, non-professional enthusiast Michael Tellinger, a researcher and writer passionate about the study of human origins, and Johann Heine, a local firefighter and pilot, decided to explore this place. That is, professional historical science arrogantly brushed aside the worthless, in its opinion, ruins that were not worth attention, as, however, it still does to this day. The results of the researchers inspired Michael Tellinger, the writer of the alternative to write the book Temples of African Gods. According to Tellinger, the evidence found suggests a completely different view of human history. According to the generally accepted version of human history, the first civilization on Earth was the Sumerian, which arose in southern Mesopotamia about 6,000 years ago. But what if there was another, earlier civilization lost in the midst of time? The photographs, artifacts and evidence we have collected point to a vanished civilization that never existed and that predates all others, not by a few hundred years or a few thousand years, but by many thousands of years. Tellinger believes this ancient African metropolis is the oldest human-built structure known today. He believes that it was from this civilization that the Sumerians and Egyptians inherited knowledge. This hypothesis is based on the fact that images of the Egyptian Ankh, Key of Life, were found on the rocks of the ancient city. How could there be an image of an Egyptian god thousands of years before the rise of Egyptian civilization? These discoveries are so stunning that they will not be taken lightly by the mainstream historical and archaeological community, as we have seen. This will require a complete paradigm shift in human history. Tellinger's findings raise more questions than answers, but we can hope that this incredible ancient city will attract more researchers in the future and that one day more light will be shed on this lost civilization and the unknown aspects of human history in general. Coughing with Dangerous Dead Yakut archaeologists discovered the remains of a man who was buried in a birch bark coffin. Features of the burial indicate that the deceased was a dangerous person. Today we will learn some aspects of the burials in the past centuries among the Yakuts and take a closer look at this unusual find of archaeologists. Archaeologists examined a coffin with bones discovered in 2018 on the left bank of the Lina River in the vicinity of Yakutsk. Archaeologists noted that until the second half of the 16th century, these lands were occupied by the Kori clans, whom the Yakuts considered to be foreigners. The northern people had different ways and types of burials, which were associated associated with ideas about the afterlife. In traditional cultures, four types of burials were common – inhumation and cremation, as well as ground and air burials. The burials of the Yakuts were mainly made in the ground, but often the deceased was left in a yurt, which was then set on fire. The deceased was about 40 years old, his height was approximately 170 centimeters, the skeleton was covered with the remains of cloth made of leather and fur, and was in a birch bark coughing, lying on a birch bark mat with a birch bark cloth on top. Radiocarbon analysis of the bones show that the man died around 1480-1640 AD. The burial was accompanied by inventory, a large blue bead, fragments of a wooden bowl and a black glass bead. Scientists also suggest that the belt of the disease was a bag with a button, a wooden spoon and medicinal plants. Several factors make the burial unusual – the prone position of the body, the orientation to the northeast and not to the west, and the absence of weapons or craft. According to researchers, all this indicates that the disease belonged to the dangerous dead, such were considered suicides, some shamans, outcasts, as well as physically or mentally handicapped people. Ancient Roman Figurine of a Fighter Scientists have found that a lead figurine of a wrestler or slave of the 1st century AD, discovered in the 1920s in an ancient Roman necropolis, depicted an African warrior. The researchers found that the man originally had a spear in his hand, and he acquired a sitting position due to the heating of soft metal during the funeral rite. Presumably, the figurine was made in the Mediterranean region. The depiction of Africans in works of art, such as sculpture, has been a popular motif since the 6th century BC. This tradition continued into the Roman period, aided by increased contact between the Romans and the sub-Saharan population. Africans were often depicted as athletes, warriors, or servants. In the course of the Roman conquest of Britain, similar objects also penetrated this region. Over the years of excavation, scientists have discovered five figurines of the Roman period depicting Africans 
significance. Scientists from the charity English Heritage, led by Cameron Moffat, have re-examined a lead figurine found in the 1920s at the site of an ancient Roman necropolis near the settlement of Lyracetum. The artifact, about 55 mm high, was dated to the 1st century AD. The depicted men wore bracelets and a necklace of large beads. Apparently, the item was grave goods accompanying the cremated remains of a buried person. Initially, the figurine was thought to represent an enslaved man, whose facial expression was interpreted as suffering. In the 1990s, this judgment was revised in favor of a wrestler sitting on the ground with his legs folded. However, in the course of the new work, the researchers found that in the right hand of the figurine, there was a previously unnoticed hole, which apparently was a bronze spear. In addition, the figurine initially stood upright, and the depicted person acquired a sitting position only later due to the fact that the soft metal was heated. The image of an African man carrying a spear is quite common in the art of the classical period, usually denoted as an African warrior. Although almost nothing is known about the owner of this item, the researchers suggested that he could see something related to himself in this figurine, so the figurine accompanies the buried even after death. Perhaps in 20-30 years, this figure will be interpreted differently. Even in such small things, we can see how historians change their minds over the years. Homo sapiens is 232,000 years old. Archaeologists have refined the dating of the Homo 1 fossils, which are considered by some scientists to be the oldest known remains of Homo sapiens. It turned out that the minimum age of these finds is about 232 plus minus 22,000 years, that is, much older than previously thought. In addition, scientists have clarified the dating of fossils from the Herta locality. They date back to about 160, 155,000 years ago. In paleoanthropology, there is no unit regarding which fossils should be considered the remains of the most ancient Homo sapiens. One common tradition is the remains of individuals Homo 1 and Homo 2, which were discovered in 1967 by Richard Leakey in southern Ethiopia near the Omo River. Radiometric analysis has shown that the age of these finds is about 200,000 years. Studies of two skulls and a postcranial skeleton allowed scientists to name these individuals as humans of modern anatomical type. However, they still had some archaic features that brought them closer to Neanderthals. Ethiopia is rich in middle Pleistocene hominine fossils, so one of them is the village of Herto, where archaeologists discovered the remains of 10 individuals, including two skulls of adults and one child. Paleoanthropological research has shown that these people belong to the subspecies Homo sapiens I dealt to. For radiometric organ dating, the scientists took 113 samples of cenidine. As a result of the study, they found that the volcanic eruption, due to which these minerals appeared, occurred 233 plus minus 22,000 years ago. New data on the time of the eruption of the Shala volcano and information of the composition of the foreign minerals allows us to refine the dating of other Ethiopian sites. So the remains from the Herto locality turn out to be really much younger than Elmo 1. According to scientists, these fossils belong to approximately 160-155 thousand years ago. However, not only the remains of Homo 1 are considered the oldest Homo sapiens. One of the other candidates is an individual from the Moroccan Paleolithic site of Jebel Erhad, who lived about 315,000 years ago. Sumerians First of all, you need to understand that necromancy is magical rituals to summon ghosts, and if many fortune-telling was done with an unknown outcome for the conductive, then in the case of summoning ghosts, the magician acted intentionally and aimed at the result. The first mention of professional necromancers is mentioned as early as the second millennium BC in Sumero-Akkadian sources. As a rule, they communicated with ghosts so that they would leave the living alone, and they themselves would find their resting place. The Sumerians, in general, were timid guys. In their religion, ghosts were more likely to be feared, but still their calls were not uncommon. 
For example, in the Tales of Gilgamesh, the god Nurgle brings his friend and companion Enkidu out of the realm of the dead, and on some clay tablets that have come down to us, there are even detailed instructions on how to summon a ghost. Some of the documents even contain warnings about which spirits are best known to invoke. Of course, what's a ritual without ingredients to summon spirits? For this, the Sumerians used quite classic things – juniper and sulfur smoke, oil, honey, wine good beer. But, on top of everything else, there were things that were wild by modern standards. So, in many rituals it was necessary to use, for example, the droppings of a wild bull and bear, crushed patridges, snake, lion and crab fat, and much more. It was also possible to resort to the possibility of talking with the dead. To do this, it was necessary to smear the eyes with a special ointment, which included human and dog bones, wolf feces, spoiled fat, black dog pus, and cedar rising. Perhaps if you rub yourself like that, not only the dead will be seen. Turkey do not think that only the Sumerians indulged in the cults of the dead. So, for example, in the territory of modern Turkey, in the temple complex of Göbekli Tepe, dated to the 10th century BC, evidence of necromancy was found. Scientists believe that ancient people practiced air burial here. On one of the columns of the complex, images of decapitated bodies of people who were carried away by birds were found. Many remains of skulls were also found here. Among them, there are also unusual finds. These skulls were suspended with the help of special grooves and holds. Researchers think that with the help of them they predicted the future, and the future also belongs to the realm of necromancy. Around the same place, archaeologists also found human skulls, which were often specially decorated with plaster and various objects. It is not yet known exactly what role they played in the life of the temple, but there is an assumption that these skulls could be original portraits of ancestors. True, this doesn't explain the relatively young age of the owners of the skulls, and even the fact that during the lifetime of the owners these skulls were specially deformed. Apparently, the emphasis was on the appearance of the owner. Israel on the territory of modern Israel, in Nahal Himer, evidence of necromancy was also found. There, archaeologists unearthed limestone masks, along with which several skulls modeled in plaster were kept. Judging by the holes in the bones, these masks were attached to the skulls themselves. Probably such amulets were made in order to scare away evil spirits that could dwell in those very skulls. Finds next to the marks show that if a living person put on these masks, then he could, as it were, reincarnate into the deceased, that is, become a guide to the world of the dead. In those days, it was believed that the dead protect the living. They were consulted and also asked for help in wealth and fertility. Ancient Egypt it is no secret that the attitude towards the dead and the afterlife in ancient Egypt was special. Their mummies and special burial traditions still reach us today. True, necromancy there was special. In the era of the Old Kingdom, the Egyptians believed that the power that a person possessed during life would go with him to the kingdom of the dead. Therefore, on the walls of many tombs of ancient nobles, we can read about who this person was during his lifetime and what power he possessed. Later, in the era of the Middle Kingdom, a whole cult of the dead developed. If you presented them with generous gifts, then it was quite possible to count on their patronage in the world of the living. And in the era of the New Kingdom, the cult of the royal dignitary Imhotep did exist. He acted as the patron of all scribes and gave answers to questions appearing to the petitioner in a dream. Pharaoh Amenhotep I could also be asked questions. His statue was carried out to his subjects, and allegedly, it acted as an oracle. He left instructions on the afterlife, advice on managing the country, and even a prediction about the coming uprising to his heir. But most often, the ancient Egyptians were still interested in ordinary everyday life. How to get cured, how to solve family problems, more luck and intercession. In addition, it was believed that the one's own disease could help in the fight against another disease. True, if suddenly the spirit did not cope well with its duties, angry letters were written to them and reproached for the fact that he did not fulfill his obligations under special agreement. According to the beliefs of the ancient Egyptians, the dead were in constant contact with the living, and therefore it was not necessary to call them. It was only necessary to constantly feed them with gifts and keep their tombs in order. True, later sources, in particular the leading papyrus, Hellenistic Egypt, describe how to call the spirit with a 
help of a vessel. It was possible to drive the spirit there, and he, in turn, would answer the questions of the living. There is also a parallel with King Solomon, who drove the demons into a copper vessel and subdued them. Ancient Greece and Rome in ancient Greece, black rams, sheep, calves, and cows were especially revered. They, in particular, were sacrificed by Odysseus, who wanted to talk with the dead. And by the way, this fragment of the Odyssey is considered to be the most ancient. In ancient Greece, in principle, necromancy was not something that was carried away. It was most developed there. In addition, the very word necromancy is of Greek origin. Contacts with the dead were called necromancy, sheomancy, or psychomancy, from the words corpse, shadow, and soul. In addition, in Greece it was easy to communicate with the dead in specially designated places. For this, there were special temples near the caves, which were considered entrances to the world of the dead. Often poisonous fumes came from the caves, or sometimes lakes, and birds did not live there. Necromancy is also reflected in myth. The Corinthian tyrant Periander, for example, who killed his wife Melissa and then raped her body, summoned his spirit to find out where she hid the treasure left to her for safekeeping. Very family-like, isn't it? Melissa, despite her resentment, nevertheless pointed to the place, but only after generous gifts. Among these very gifts were rich clothes that Melissa was given with the help of noble ladies. They came to the king's feast where they were undressed and the clothes themselves were burned. So it goes, it is no secret that literature was very developed in the ancient state. And often writers like to use eerie descriptions of rituals to make their work rich. Such was the image of Erecta Lucan created. It looked creepy, summoned the dead, swore at the gods and made wild sounds. In general, the attitude towards this art among the Greeks varies from author to author. Some people approve of calling, some don't. In the same Horus, the witches Canidia and Sagan look scary. They are disheveled, not girded, barefoot, and the lamb is completely torn apart with their bare hands. It is also interesting that in ancient Greek and Roman culture, there was calls that gave predictions. Even the dad of Orpheus, which was thrown into the sea and then found off the coast of the island of Lesbos, prophesied from a crevice in the earth. There are other hats that bring predictions. The head of the victim of the wolves of the Publius, the hermaphrodite Polycritus, killed by his own father and many others. And they didn't need any rituals, they said to themselves. But the hats could be made on purpose. So the king of Sparta, Cleomenes, consulted with the head of his friend. True, the Tsar turned out to be a friend of three. He promised to make this very advisor a co-ruler, but then he killed him and kept his head so as not to violate this oath. The Greeks also actively turned to the dead for help. Many of them ask the diseased about everyday successes, strength, luck, winning in court, and so on. They even wrote special letters to the dead on pieces of lead, marble, clay, mica, copper, and much more. Over time, even specialists appeared who, for a fee, helped to compose these same letters to the dead, and the list of Greek practices for dealing with the dead is extremely extensive. Many rituals further used in various practices of necromancy, including modern ones. Judaism Surprisingly, the Jews also used the practice of necromancy. Although in the religion of the Jews there was an unambiguous ban on necromancy, which was then adopted by Christianity. But despite this, the same Bible describes the ritual of necromancy, chapter 28 of the first book of Kings. There, the sorceress from Ender, at the request of King Saul, who had previously expelled all the magicians from the country, summons the spirit of the prophet Samuel to ask him about the impending war. The spirit in turn, Seth the soul will soon die as a punishment for not following the will of God, who previously did not give an answer in an acceptable way. Because of this passage of the Bible, at one time there were fierce disputes among Christians. Why did the prophet appear himself, and could it not be a demon, by special permission of God? Indeed, in the first case, this would mean that the witch can control the prophet of God, and she, by the way, breaks the law and creates witchcraft. And if it is a demon, it would confirm the holy text that in fact all souls belong to God and cannot be summoned. Christianity 
The Christian tradition inherited much from the Jewish one, but thanks to the work of the Church Fathers, it also absorbed Greco-Roman elements. Here, relations with the dead are built in a special way. On the one hand, necromancy is directly and unambiguously forbidden by the Bible. On the other hand, some dead ascetics are perceived intercessors, mediators between God and men, able to convey the petitioner's prayer to God. Relics are kept in church according to believers, which have a special power, holiness. In the lives of some saints, one can find episodes that are very similar to necromancy. For example, Saint Macarius the Great, with the help of prayer, revives a corpse in order to establish the innocence of the alleged murderer. The spirit returns to the body, but answers questions from underground while in its grave. Saint Ruffing tells the story of the hermit Peter Mathia, who temporarily revived a dead monk in order to find out whether he was satisfied with the way his funeral had prepared. Also, Peter Mathia, through a kiss and prayer, revives a brother in faith with whom he did not have time to say goodbye. Interestingly, in this case, the elder offers the deceased a choice to die again or continue to live. Reverend Mark the Gravedigger also revives the dead. He received such strength from God as he worked hard preparing places for the burial of monks, as evidenced by his nickname. It is important to understand that Christians do not identify what is described with necromancy as part of the forbidden art of magic, but attribute such episodes to miracles, outstanding unusual events occurring from God. Miracles are opposed to rituals performed out of self-interest, vanity, and accordingly going against God. Mention of such necromancy can be seen in the New Testament. Simon Magus, a contemporary of the Apostles, tries to resurrect the widow's son, who has been carried to the place of burial, but fails, although he achieves that the disease begins to move his head. It is emphasized that in this case, the return of the soul to the body is only a deception committed with the help of demons. The descriptions of contacts with the dead were also influenced by the Christian practice of indulgences used by the Catholic Church, because thanks to an indulgence, the disease disease can be released from purgatory. This has given rise to a number of stories in which the diseased attempt to exchange their favors for absolution. Appearing ghosts ask to make donations to the church and offers prayers for them. Around the 15th century, stories appear in European folklore in which priests have special knowledge of how to summon the dead. Middle Ages and Modern Times Despite the large number of references to magical books in medieval folklore, there were practically no real works devoted to necromancy. Perhaps this was facilitated by the active struggle of the church against heresies. However, in later literature there are not only descriptions of the practices of communication with the dead, but also attempts to classify them, although the authors turned to this topic very reluctantly. Agrippa, in occult philosophy, referring to Greek descriptions, speaks of two types of necumancy and skiamancy. The revival of corpses is called necumancy, which is impossible without blood. Skiamancy is the invocation of souls, which, however, does not do without a corpse or its parts, for such things contain spiritual power friendly to them, spirits. Both types of necromancy are clearly frowned upon by the author, but the second seems less repulsive to him. Despite the general disapproval, there are also descriptions of perfect necromantic rituals. For example, for example, in the English book Ancient Tombstones by Dee Weaver, it is described how Edward Cowley and Paul Voring, using magic circles and spells, resurrect a young man who himself was involved in magic during his lifetime. The spirit returns to the body and rises, assuming an upright position, very characteristic of the Greek descriptions of the reanimation of corpses, after which it gives answers to the questions of magicians. Spiritualism with the report that the Fox sisters in their home made contact with the ghost through knocking, spiritualism has become widespread in the United States and then throughout the world. Quite quickly, currents arise, the followers of which build their lives in accordance with the recommendations of the spirits, collect information about the afterlife and spiritual words. The question of with whom communication occurs, with the dead or with harmful spirits, is widely discussed. Spirits are trying to get photographed and explored. The materializations of various items from the spiritual world become public shows. Table turning is practiced both in elite salons and in merchants and even in village houses. 
The popularity of spiritualism subsides only by the 1930s. However, in our time there are circles and societies that actively practice various types of it. We can observe echoes of the popularity of spiritualistic seances in various traditional divination, as well as in household and even children's magic. Divination in a circle using a saucer, a ring or a needle suspended on a thread, summoning a spirit using a saucer, etc. Modernity by the end of the 20th century, necromancy again began to actively appear in the information space. It is addressed in fiction, music, films, TV shows, playing on the greatest human fear, the fear of death, having the image of a forbidden and dangerous art. Necromancy at the same time acquires a certain romantic halo, attracting the attention of people. Ancient practices are once again becoming in demand among those who are interested in magic, esotericism and the occult. On thematic resources on the internet, methods and recipes are exchanged. Practitioners of necromancy share stories of successful experiences and discuss the results. Modern methods are a mixture of a large number of ancient sources and are actively supplemented. In one ritual, elements of voodoo, the Mexican cult of the holy death, Greek, Roman description of rituals and methods of European magic can merge. Necromancers quite openly offer and advertise their services. Not a single season of the Battle of the Psychics is complete without talking to the dead. For a certain amount, you can easily organize a walk through the cemeteries and conduct practical classes. A fairly interesting modern trend in necromancy is information transcommunication, based on the electronic voice phenomena, discovered in 1959 by the Swedish film producer Friedrich Jargensen while recording Birdsong. In Russia, this direction is actively developed by the Russian Association of Instrumental Transcommunication, established in St. Petersburg in 2003 by Artem Mikheyev, candidate of physical and mathematical sciences. Representatives of this community do not consider themselves necromancers and insist that their research is strictly scientific. Using special equipment and technology, they are trying to scientifically prove the existence of the other world and the possibility of contact with its inhabitants, including the dead. In addition to audio recordings, the method of photography of spirits is actively used. For example, according to the water method, in order to see a spirit, it is necessary to fill a vessel with water, preferably with a reflective bottom, set the water in motion and take several photographs, which refers us to the Greek medicine mania, divination by a vessel with water. In the future, in these photographs, images of the subtle world and its inhabitants are searched for in random highlights. Thus, one can see that necromancy has not gone down in history, but continues to exist, develop and change. Practitioners of contact with the dead are constantly in search of new technologies and methods. Like the people of ancient civilizations, our contemporaries are looking for an answer to the question of what awaits us beyond the inevitable line that everyone will step over sooner or later. It remains to be hoped that the assumptions of these researchers that life does not end with death will one day be confirmed. Silver Scrolls of Kits of Hinnom the archaeological site of Kits of Hinnom is a complex of rock-cut burial chambers located southwest of the old city of Jerusalem, on the road to Bethlehem. In 1979, archaeologists made an important discovery at the site. They found two silver plates twisted like scrolls. They were inscribed in Old Hebrew. These scrolls are believed to have been used as amulets and date back to the 7th century BC. The texts on these amulets contain the oldest surviving quotations from the Torah. Akambera figurines An archaeological find which to this day causes a lot of controversy in the scientific world. Some researchers claim that the collection is a skillful forgery, while others are confident in its authenticity. Today, the figurines are in the Akambera Museum, attracting many tourists from many countries. The collection includes small clay figurines made in the form of animals, dinosaurs and humans. The finds were collected by the German immigrant Waldemar Jolsrud. He claimed to have found the first item near a mountain near Akambaro. Then Jolsrud discovered similar items from the local residents of the settlement and decided to buy them. The oldest buildings in the UAE found the ruins found by archaeologists are 500 years older than the most ancient buildings known in the UAE so far. 
Archaeologists studying the heritage of the United Arab Emirates continue to add new chapters to the history of this land. On the island of Gaga, located west of the city of Abu Dhabi, scientists have found stone structures and artifacts created 8,500 years ago. The previous record for the earliest structure in the UAE is held by the ruins on Morava Island, and they are 500 years younger. Here, in layers aged 5,800-5,600 years, there was a pearl which indicates a well-established practice of trade and exchange. Based on these and a number of other discoveries, it was believed that the first settlements in this area were created during the Neolithic period with the development of trade sea routes. The presence of an 8,500-year-old building proves that people lived here before. The islands of Abu Dhabi were a fertile coast, and the advent of trade with distant countries only strengthened their prosperity. The found building is a simple round room, the walls of which are made of stone. Their full height has not been established, stones laid to a height of about a meter have survived to this day. People lived there all year round. Numerous artifacts testify to this, including skillfully crafted stone narrow hats that were used for hunting. The inhabitants also enjoyed rich seafood. How long the settlement existed has not yet been established, but even after it was abandoned, it was not forgotten. Almost 5,000 years ago, a man was buried in the ruins. This is one of the few burials of this period known on the islands of Abu Dhabi. Mangazea This was the name of the first Russian polar city of the 17th century. It originated in 1607 on the Taz River in Siberia. It was created, first of all, to exercise government control over the Mangazia Sea Route, connecting the White Sea and the Ob. Flour, bread, salt and other goods were brought to Siberia through Mangazia, and a huge amount of furs was exported. The city was rich, legends were even made about its wealth, calling Mangazia gold boiling. Alas, the city lasted less than a century. The inhabitants left Mangazia. The main role in this was played by a general change in the ways of colonizing Siberia and also by the impoverishment of local fur trades. Mangazia became uninteresting for its townspeople, but not for archaeologists. The first excavations in these places were carried out in 1862 by Koshalovsky. During the excavations, it turned out that Mangazia had a division typical for ancient Russian cities into a city, Kremlin, and a suburb. Nadaba map the Medaba map is the oldest surviving map of the Holy Land, especially Jerusalem, and is part of a floor mosaic in the Byzantine Church of St. George in Medaba, Jordan. The map was discovered during repairs to the church in 1884 and has been dated to sometime between 506 C and 565 AD. Although the map originally depicted much of the Middle East, from southern Syria to central Egypt, most of the mosaic map had already been destroyed when it was first discovered. However, the part of the map depicting Jerusalem remained untouched and includes an oval-shaped fortified city with six gates, 21 towers, and several dozen buildings and structures. Visitors to Madaba can see the map in person. A copy of the ancient map is also kept at the Archaeological Institute of the University of Göttingen in Germany. An unusual dinosaur's feature Scientists have discovered the first fossils of the dog-billed dinosaur H. Nabiya Odysseus in African Morocco. H. Nabiya means foreigner in Arabic. They find puzzled experts because until now, such species were found only in Europe. At the time of the dinosaurs, the two continents were separated by a deep ocean, so the researchers wanted to find out how they got to Africa. The species H. Nabiya Odysseus lived at the end of the Cretaceous period 66 million years ago. These dinosaurs ate plants, but compared to other fellow platypuses, were small in size, 3 meters in length. Scientists explain their surprise after finding it in Africa. It's like finding a kangaroo in Scotland. Experts studied the teeth and jaw bones of the species and determined that it belonged to the subfamily of duck-billed dinosaurs, Lambiosaurians. On their heads, scientists believe were intricate bone crests. They first lived in North America, then spread to Asia and Europe, but their fossils have never been found in Africa. The researchers argue that dinosaurs could not have reached the continent by land. According to scientists, the animals probably got there by water. It is assumed that representatives of this species were good swimmers. They had powerful legs and tails. In addition, the remains were found in river sediments and sea rocks, which suggests that they could move on water. 
10 million year old tooth. Scientists from Germany fear that the whole world after their discovery will have to rewrite the history of mankind. We are talking about a tooth that was discovered near the German commune of Appelsheim. Researchers have previously found a similar find only in Ethiopia. The similarity of the teeth found so impressed them that they double-checked the dating of the remains for more than a year so as not to make hasty statements. The age of the last tooth found is almost 10 million years. One of the oldest Buddhist temples in the world Stone fragments date back to the 2nd century BC. Archaeologists from Italy have found one of the oldest Buddhist temples in the world in the Pakistani city of Barakat. Stone wall fragments and other artifacts date back to the second half of the 2nd century BC. Italian experts have been working in the Gandhari region since 1955, but large-scale discoveries have only just been made. The city of Barakat, where Italian scientists work today, is mentioned in Greek and Latin texts as Basira or Vajrasana. This is one of the cities besieged by Alexander the Great. This place played an important role in the management of all agriculture areas of the Swat Valley, which due to its microclimate allows grain or rice to be harvested twice a year. For Alexander the Great, Barakat became a kind of granary, which he took advantage of before he continued his campaign in India. Italian scientists have found that the ancient temple in Barakat had a cylindrical shape and a height of 3 meters. It was built in an epsidal podium during the reign of the Indo-Greek king Menanda I. At the same time, an even more ancient structure was previously located on the site where the temple was erected. Archaeologists also found fragments of inscriptions on ceramics made in the Karashi script and several coins. Scholars believe that during its long history, the temple in Barakat has been repeatedly vandalized. And finally, it was abandoned at the beginning of the 3rd century AD, when the lower city was destroyed by an earthquake. Peruvian Sea Monster Today, whales are considered kind and rather harmless creatures, but the ancient whale that plowed the waters of present-day Peru 36 million years ago hardly fits this description. The formidable animal, which is called the sea monster, reached 17 meters in length and had razor-sharp teeth, which allowed it to feed on large animals, including tuna and sharks. This find is outstanding due to its excellent state of preservation. This animal was one of the largest predators of its time. A whale's skull with rows of long, sharp teeth was discovered last year in Peru's Occupash Desert. At that time, the Peruvian Sea was warm. Thanks to these fossils, we can reconstruct the history of the Peruvian Sea. Scientists believe that the skull belonged to Basilosaurus, a member of the aquatic cetacean family whose descendants are whales, dolphins, and porpoises. Although the name Basilosaurus means royal lizard, the animal is not a reptile. However, according to scientists, the movements of its long body could indeed resemble the movements of a large snake. The predator Akukash, as scientists dubbed it, used its powerful teeth to feed on tuna, sharks, and schools of sardines. The researchers explained that when Basilosaurus died, its skull likely sank to the bottom of the seafloor, where it quickly petrified. The first cetacean, such as Basilosaurus, evolved from land animals about 55 million years ago. By the late Eocene, 56 to 34 million years ago, cetaceans were fully adapted to marine life. The Akukash Desert is rich in fossils, thanks to which scientists can trace 42 million years of evolution. Humanity nearly died out 70,000 years ago. Man, as a species, was on the verge of extinction about 70,000 years ago, a recent genetic study testifies. Scientists believe that at some point only 2,000 people remained alive on Earth. This means that for quite a long period of time, man was actually an endangered species and is a victim of disease, natural disasters and conflicts. If at that historical moment even one of these factors had worked against Homo sapiens, we simply would not exist today. In addition, as a result of the same genetic experiment which writes the American Journal of Human Genetics, the researchers came to the conclusion that a man first left Africa at about the same time, 70,000 years ago. 
Unlike their closest relatives, the chimpanzee, all humans have virtually identical DNA. Moreover, even in one group of chimpanzees, individuals have more differences in the structure of DNA than all 6 billion people now living on Earth. According to the BBC, scientists from the American Stanford University and the Russian Academy of Sciences compared 377 microsatellite marks in DNA collected in 52 regions of the Earth. The result revealed a close relationship between two generations of hunter-gatherers living in sub-Saharan Africa, the Imbudi pygmies of the Congo Basin and the Hosean Bushmen of Botswana. The researchers believe that the Imbudi and the Hoseans are representatives of the oldest branch of modern man ever studied. Such small differences in the DNA of modern people indicate that in the last 100,000 years man was literally on the verge of extinction, and all representatives of the human race living today are descendants of a small group that survived in their time. Its number probably did not exceed 2,000 individuals during the critical period. The oldest family tree in the world Ancient DNA analysis of one of Britain's best-preserved Neolithic tombs, nearly 6,000 years old, shows that 27 of the 35 people contained inside were from five continuous generations of one large family. Heselton North Mount in the Cotswold Hills in the west of England is one of the best-preserved Neolithic tombs in the UK. Inside, the remains of 35 people were discovered in the 1980s, all believed to have lived between 5,600 and 5,700 years ago, about a hundred years after agriculture began in the area. Several years ago, a team of specialists extracted genetic material from these buried remains. In a recent study, scientists used the genetic data to recreate construct various relationships between all these people. The analyses show that most of the people buried in the grave were descended from four women who had children from the same man. These results suggest that polygamous marriages existed in the Neolithic society of that time. Researchers find it unlikely that this male ancestor had four wives, one after the other. In fact, he probably had several wives at the same time. The results of this work also show that men tended to be buried with their father and brothers, indicating a patrilineal origin. In other words, the buried of later generations were connected to the first generation through their male relatives. Finally, the team identified eight people who were not biological relatives of those listed on the family tree. However, three of them were women, therefore it is possible that they had a partner in the grave, but no children. It is also possible that they had daughters, but they left the community as adults, which would explain their absence from the grave. Ancient tombs and sarcophagus found under Notre Dame Several tombs and elite sarcophagus were found in Notre Dame during the reconstruction of the cathedral after a fire in 2019. This is reported by The Guardian with reference to the French Ministry of Culture. It is assumed that the sarcophagus was made for a high-ranking dignitary in the 1300s. Apparently, under the weight of the earth and stones, it was deformed. To look inside it, a team of experts used a mini-endoscopic camera. You can catch a glimpse of bits of clothes, hair, and a pillow of leaves on top of the deceased, a well-known phenomena when religious leaders were buried. That these plant elements are still inside means that the body is very well preserved. In addition to the tombs, elements of painted sculptures were also found. They have been identified as parts of the original 13th-century cross partition, the architectural element that separates the altar from the nave. Rate this video with your thumbs up or down, tell your friends about it, and I will definitely answer every kind comment. Thanks for your views! Bye, everyone!